morning all or maybe it's uh, good afternoon I don't know when you're watching this but I'm on my morning walk so that's where the morning comes from and I've been stepping over fences and passing through gates as one does on a walk in the mountains around here or in this landscape where there's lots of areas where we have right of way over land that is owned by other people it's private property and um, as I've been doing so that got me thinking about how I was actually crossing boundaries stepping over boundaries you could say and that again got me thinking about how it can be really challenging to set boundaries and to maintain those boundaries once we've um, figured out what our values are and what is most important to us and that we want to protect that and we want to protect that which is sacred to us it sounds so easy doesn't it you know what is important to you you know you want to protect that you want to you don't want people to damage that that's for lack of another word to step into what you consider your personal space to cross boundaries for you your boundaries and yet it can be so challenging it's not so hard in your head when you're just by yourself or when it is you setting a boundary just for you in your private life it gets more challenging when you're part of a group even if that group consists of only you and one other person for example or I'm thinking of instances when I've been up in the mountains with a good friend of mine who has a different understanding let's call it that a different understanding of what is dangerous or potentially dangerous than I do so we can come up to I don't know a climb in a hike or a snow field that needs crossing and he can look at me and say you're not going to do this are you and he's usually right not always sometimes I will cross that snow field or I will do that climb but there are things that I will not do because I look at what it is at my capabilities and what danger is acceptable for me and then I decide whether or not I will do whatever lies before me it gets even more challenging when that group is bigger when I don't know when that group consists of four five six or even more people because then when one becomes the only one who says well I'm not doing this I think it's too dangerous or I'm too scared or I'm too tired whatever the reason is that you do not want to do whatever I do you do not want to cross the snow field or do that bit of climbing that is in the hike without you know and everybody else is like well don't be a wimp you can do that we're all doing it why are you not doing it now we have to turn back because you're not doing it you don't want to it can be inc it can be feel like the easiest thing to do is to just give in but when you do you you ignore the boundary that you set for yourself now when I take this to a setting outside of mountains just in regular life we've all been in situations where we didn't want to do something 
or we didn't, didn't want other people to do something because they were about to cross the boundary for us. And let's be fair, let's be clear. When people start press pressuring you to do something you do not want to do, they are crossing a boundary. They are not respecting a boundary that you have set. I think it was last week that somebody posted something on LinkedIn saying, talking about how not drinking is apparently a problem for other people. When you say, I'm sorry, I don't drink, that for a lot of people is not good enough. They think it's necessary to tell us that we're a spoil sports. And again, crossing a boundary. Now, hang on, I have to pass. <laughs> That's appropriate, I have to pass through a gate. Um, like I said, again, crossing boundaries, not respecting boundaries. Now, of course, you first need to know what it is that you want to protect. What it is that is so important to you that around those things, you draw a boundary, a line that you do not want to be crossed, want to have crossed. And that's some, sometimes requires some thinking. I was talking to Bernard Fanger recently for my podcast and uh, we were talking about how when we were in the midst of our careers just doing the things that we thought were expecting us, expected of us, working really hard and everything. If you had asked us back then, back then we probably wouldn't have been able to tell you what our boundaries were and what our values were, let alone have been able to draw boundaries around them. And sometimes it can be a real challenge to think about what are your boundaries? Especially when you spend all your time in your head, which is probably what you're doing when, or what you're doing a lot of the time when you're when you're just working a lot, or when work, and definitely when work has completely taken over your life. So, sometimes you just need to take time out and to go someplace to think, to go for a walk. And the funny thing about walking is, you start doing it because you need time and space to think. And instead of staying in your head, you drop into your body and your body starts to think and your body starts to or your unconscious starts to take over and you just walk and you don't think as much and in spite of that or maybe because of it that thing that you were going to think about and are not thinking about becomes clear anyways especially when you go for longer walks especially when you go into an environment for a couple of days where you disconnect from the phone, where you disconnect from internet, a digital detox, if you will, where you don't hear what I'm just, where you, what you probably can hear right now, which is a tractor, two tractors actually going down the road. But when you're just somewhere off in nature, exercising your body to relax your mind. It's a good one, isn't it? Exercising your body to relax your mind. I just I thought it was so good I'd say it again. Because there's something that happens when you do that for more than just a couple of hours, but for a couple of days. When you come to the end of the second, start of the third day, I'm sorry, I'm just being, I'm distracted by an eagle flying up there. Anyways, can't show you because on my phone it would be just a, no, probably not even a speck. But anyways, where was I? Um, it's right. 
when you go into nature and you do a digital detox, you, you spend time away from everything that reminds you of that stressful life that you're living. By the end of the second, start of the third day, it is as if your that working part of your brain that is always humming has been wiped clean. And you were because you stopped thinking, you dropped into your body. And then you that that thing you were thinking about, those values you were trying to to find, that clarity about how do I set boundaries that you were hoping to figure out those things will come and that's exactly why after I launched three climb your mountains climb your mountain online programs I now have launched a climb your mountain live program where I'll take you into the mountains for five days for a digital detox walking from mountain in to mountain in in landscape like that behind me there and that looks serious but if you're somewhat fit I promise you you can do it five days without internet connection without mobile phone just your body your backpack with whatever things you need hiking from mountain in to mountain in enjoying the quiet the company of people just like you in a small intimate group time to think or rather time to stop your brain and let all of you your body, your mind, reconnect and let them figure it out. So go to daregreatlycoaching.com and you can find out everything you need to know about the three online programs. And again, appropriate, I have to once again pass through a gate. You can find out everything about the online program but also about the live program. So go to daregreatlycoaching.com. If you like it, apply and roll. If you don't like it, all good, enjoy your day. And until then, go there greatly. Bye bye.